established in the Everglades. They've been there since the 90s, but they have been slowly spreading. I think we will begin to see more pythons in this region soon. I would say this is the invasion front. Now they want hunters in central Florida to be aware. You don't even consider it, you don't think about it. Florida Everglades and I got a handful of invasive Burmese pythons. They're eating the dogs. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country. Yeah, so if you didn't know, Florida has a python problem, and they've been invasive for over 50 years now. Yes, even before Hurricane Andrew. And they've been being found in the Everglades for a very long time, and people are starting to wonder with increasing temperatures and an increasing python population, how far north are these snakes really gonna go? And today, this video is gonna try to answer that question. In case you didn't know, Florida actually has multiple different species of invasive python, but the main one we're going to be talking about today is the Burmese python, the only one that has been able to successfully colonize the vast majority of the Everglades, and the only species that is being found somewhat regularly now north of the Everglades. If you didn't know, the Burmese python is a large tropical species of snake capable of getting up to 20 feet long. That was introduced primarily through the pet trade from Southeast Asia. Believe it or not, these snakes actually do not eat people, like what all the rumors say, and could actually make good pets, but the thing is, most people just can't handle a 15-foot snake. And that's kind of common sense, but sadly, a lot of people don't really understand that. And for that reason, in addition to the small possibility of purposeful releases, and also, of course, Hurricane Andrew, which let loose a whole bunch of Burmese pythons, there's a ton of giant snakes out in the Everglades. Even on top of the Burmese python, we also had the African rock python which has a breeding population, and also a few species of boa as well. But so far the Burmese python seems to be the most cold tolerant in addition to the most ecologically damaging, as in some parts of the Everglades they've wiped out as much as 90% of all the mammals in the area. Though this could also be contributed to rising water levels and improper management which puts a lot of the mammal populations at risk. Though it's undeniable that the Burmese python at the very least plays a big part in this unfortunate mammal decline. They've also played a big part in the native snake decline as they spread rat lungworm which happens to destroy a lot of our native snake populations. Though nobody talks about it and it's starting to piss me off and make me want to make my own video about it. But that's enough of me rambling. Let's figure out how far north these snakes are really gonna go, starting off with their current northernmost breeding population, which actually isn't too far from their original point in the Everglades. With the northernmost point pythons have regularly been found at being the surrounding areas of Gasparilla Sound, which includes the area around Charlotte just south of Mayaca, Florida. This specific part of Florida happens to have a very high mammal population, much higher than that of the Everglades, which is really good for the Burmese python, but how are they taking the cold temperatures statewide? As while Florida is mostly tropical, it does have its own occasional winters, or should I say cold fronts, which could severely harm the Burmese python's population. But so far, how are they adapting to it? The answer is that these pythons are adapting to the cold snaps disturbingly well, as back in 2010, a good one-tenth of the python population was killed off by the last cold snap, but now it seems like every other cold snap that happens barely kills off the population. This is really impressive when you remember the fact that Burmese pythons are a strictly tropical species of snake, and when these cold fronts do hit Florida, they even end up killing a lot of our native wildlife, such as our American crocodiles and our manatees. A good example of this was back in 2018, where a total of 40 manatees Manatees died of cold stress, yet that cold snap barely affected the Burmese python's population. This is due to three things which could possibly contribute to the Burmese python's spread in the future. The first of which is their adaptability. As over time, many of the Burmese pythons have started to learn that when cold snaps hit, they could simply go underground. And Florida has two different species of burrowing animal which allow for this to happen the nine-banded armadillo, and the gopher tortoise, both of which do extend up north. With the gopher tortoise in particular extending up into central Georgia, and the nine-banded armadillo stretching a little farther north into the Carolinas, but also spreading pretty far west, out into about the Midwest. 
But while pythons might be adapting to learn that they could simply hold out the cold in these burrows, what they can't adapt for is long-term winters. These pythons don't exactly brumate or hibernate, so they really can't stick out for too long in these burrows. And on top of that, one of these species, the gopher tortoise, happens to inhabit dry scrub areas primarily, which isn't even the habitat pythons like, as they typically prefer much more humid habitats. So this restriction, in addition to the fact that Burmese pythons, no matter what, simply can't take really cold temperatures for a really long period of time, such as what would normally be experienced north of the Carolinas. That pretty much makes maps like this impossible, at least for right now, but we'll get into that in a little bit. The other reason why these Burmese pythons have been adapting to these cooler temperatures is the fact that Florida's Burmese pythons aren't exactly pure-blooded Burmese pythons. A recent DNA test has shown that a lot of these Burmese pythons also contain Indian python DNA, which happens to be a smaller close relative, which happens to be a good bit more capable of dealing with the cold. But even then, the cold temperatures that the Indian python would experience in its native range still doesn't compared to the minimums you'd see every year in most of the northern or even central states across the United States. This in of itself already restricts the Burmese python to the southeast, but that's when you get into some other limiting factors, such as how cold snaps would affect these northern states and how the Burmese pythons would possibly deal with snow, something that they're simply unfamiliar with, and could also significantly cool down the temperatures of any of these burrows. But regardless, the hybridization of Indian pythons and Burmese pythons has allowed for this species of python to spread a lot faster and evolve a lot quicker as it has more traits being introduced to the gene pool, allowing for more variation, and with more variation comes more opportunities for these pythons to become more cold tolerant and learn what they should do when it gets cold. That being, go into burrows, or in some cases maybe even go into the water, as the Burmese python is highly aquatic and could easily warm itself up in the water, which tends to cool down a lot more slowly than the air. But at the same time, you're never going to be seeing pythons in an environment that could ever get particularly icy, like what you see with alligators up in North Carolina. That simply isn't going to happen. And while Burmese pythons don't need to live in particularly humid environments, they for sure won't be spreading out into the deserts of the Western Americas or even the Great Plains anytime soon, as those environments are simply just too dry for this python to adapt. And these environments are also very vulnerable to cold fronts, which could definitely get down into the 30s yearly, which is something these pythons simply aren't going to be able to survive in. Even though this does happen in Florida maybe once every 10 years, it still does affect the python population. And even with these snakes evolving to deal with cooler temperatures, it's highly doubtful that they would be able to adapt to such cold temperatures such regularly. Especially when you take into account the fact that deserts tend to cool down significantly at night, which also tends to be the time when, in which Burmese pythons are the most active. But this still leaves the possibility of them still being able to colonize places such as South Georgia and maybe even Southern Alabama and Louisiana. So what's preventing that from happening? Well, so far it seems to have less to deal with climate and more to deal with simple practical Calities. The main reason why a reptile species is going to spread its range isn't to take over territory the same way something like a panther would. Instead, a reptile species is going to expand its range once it runs out of resources, and so far it seems like the Everglades is still capable of sustaining a large number of Burmese pythons. But it's hard to say how long that's going to last, especially when you remember that. A large Burmese python could lay up to 80 eggs, which is pretty concerning for the environment. And also the native animals haven't fully adapted to predate on the Burmese pythons yet. So, so far that leads to the Burmese pythons still increasing their population in the Everglades, which is eventually going to lead to them running out of food. But surprisingly, even though they've been here for 50 years, that still hasn't fully happened yet. Especially when you remember the fact that while Burmese pythons have a preference for mammalian prey, they could very much eat a lot of the alligators and birds in the area as well, meaning that they could survive exclusively in the Everglades for a very long time, especially when you remember the fact that they still aren't as numerous up north in areas like Loxachi National Wildlife Refuge and its adjacent STAs, which do contain pythons, but only in very low numbers, as they simply haven't needed to spread to those areas yet, leaving most of the native wildlife in those areas, at least in terms of mammalian animals, preserved. And as stated before, they're not going to spread unless they need to, and with so many pythons hunters dedicating their time and effort going out there in order to capture these creatures, ensuring that they don't spread north or even south into the Florida Keys, there's a really good chance that these pythons aren't going to spread anytime soon to North Florida or any of the surrounding states. 
but still people are finding them up north in Charlotte County and getting closer to Sarasota. And there's even been some sightings and captures in Central Florida. But are these coming from the pythons in the Everglades or possible purposeful releases coming throughout the state? There have been sightings all the way up in Gainesville, but to our knowledge, those are simply just purposeful releases. And so far, no pythons really been tracked traveling too far from its original site where they've been dumped. So the idea of a python coming all the way down from South Florida all the way up in New Georgia or Alabama simply isn't going to happen. But what about in the near future when climate change begins to heat up the country? While this is a big concern for pretty much the whole world, I don't think the Burmese python should be a part of that discussion for two reasons. One of which is the fact that if the world gets hot enough to where these Burmese pythons could actually travel into northern states and survive there, then I think we have much bigger problems, such as the entire state of Florida would probably be underwater by then. But if you want to ignore that, then we could talk about the other elephant in the room. That being that we're talking about climate change, and while that would increase the average temperatures, at least that we're predicting right now, of the surrounding states, it would not predict the minimum temperatures that you'd experience in these states. If anything, according to most current climate change predictions, the minimum temperatures experienced in these states each year would actually be even colder than what's currently being seen right now. And it's certainly not average temperatures that are killing off these Burmese pythons in winters, it's the cold fronts. And if these cold fronts become more numerous and severe, even with the hotter average temperatures, these Burmese pythons simply won't be able to survive as they haven't adapted to a regularly seasonal climate. And by the time they would adapt, they'd pretty much be an entirely different species, and this country would have much bigger problems. Overall, unlike what the news wants you to believe, the Burmese python isn't actually a significant threat to humans as long as they're left alone. Unlike the reticulate python, which actually has reports of them eating children, the Burmese python so far doesn't have any of these reports confirmed. And while they are certainly capable of killing a person, they're not going to try, unless if they're of course harassed. What these snakes do pose a threat to, though, is the native ecosystem and all the animals that inhabit it. So that's why we have to try to limit the spread of these snakes. And as I've hopefully made it clear, they're very unlikely to spread to any new states anytime soon. And by the time they do, it will likely be that we have much bigger problems. But so far, where else are they going to spread to within the state of Florida? Well, there are two possibilities. The first one, and the more likely scenario, is that they will eventually spread down to the Florida Keys. The Burmese python, in addition to boa constrictors, are now regularly being found in Key Largo, the northernmost key in Florida. And as we know, Burmese pythons are actually capable of traversing through saltwater environments for short periods of time. So odds are they will eventually swim down from key to key and possibly spread throughout the Florida Keys without proper management of people hunting these pythons. But thankfully, a lot of people are on patrol, and so far there's no known breeding populations of Burmese pythons on any of the Florida Keys, though about the entire key deer population. Though so far, no Burmese pythons have been found on Big Pine Key breeding. And thankfully, so far, this endangered dwarf deer population is safe. But a lot of the other native mammals to the Everglades haven't been so lucky, as certain rabbits and foxes have entirely been wiped out from certain areas due to the Burmese python, on top of other invasive species, though the Burmese python likely played the largest factor in contributing to their decline. And while the Burmese python isn't abundant in every part of the Everglades yet, it is really only a matter of time as they've been able to spread throughout the past 50 years throughout the vast majority of the Everglades, and it's only a matter of time before they are eventually able to be found somewhat regularly throughout pretty much every major part of the Everglades. And that is a true shame. But what about going further north? So far, due to the lack of habitation west of the Everglades, the Burmese pythons have had a much easier time spreading across the west coast, going as far as the Caloosahatchee River and officially past it in New Charlotte. They've even been reported on the coast as far as Sanibel Island, Island and Pine Island, which is pretty impressive for these snakes to do, though this has only been a recent development as they've only passed the Clusachi River in the past six years, at least from what that's been reported. On the east coast, though, they haven't had as much luck, with some sightings being found all the way up north in Bavard, though these aren't in incredibly low numbers, and they aren't being found nearly as consistently as the Burmese pythons have on the western side of Florida, north of the Everglades. Even when it comes to the northeastern Everglades itself, Burmese pythons have only been found in very low numbers numbers in the southern parts of Loxahatchee National Wildlife Refuge, and to our knowledge, they haven't even spread to the grassy waters preserve yet, at least in breeding numbers. 
This is likely due to the increased presence of python hunters and also there being more development on the east coast, at least so far. In turn, the east coast and, to a lesser extent, the more developed areas on the west coast are known for having incredibly extensive canal systems, which allow for these pythons to travel pretty easily across the state. And I'd say it's still only a matter of time before they eventually start spreading to central Florida. It's very hard to say, though, if they'll ever end up going north of Orlando, as a lot of other invasive species that also come from tropical environments such as the spectacle caiman and the green iguana have failed at this task and while both the and while i don't think we should all hate the burmese python we do unfortunately have to find a way to eliminate them but you should keep in mind it's not their fault that they're here it's ours for releasing them into the wild and not being able to properly take care of them in captivity where they aren't at risk of going loose from hurricanes that unfortunately applies to most of the invasive species in Florida, and not just the reptiles, even when it comes to mammals such as cats, and yes, we do have invasive capybara. That's a whole nother video though. But overall, what we should do is value every creature while also valuing the creatures that belong here first. And with that, I really hope you learned something from this video and enjoyed. So please feel free to like and subscribe so you can learn more about animals, if it's from my animal adventures or my mini documentaries.